welcome. My name is Edie with Solo Yoga, and I will be moving through here today just a breakdown of a common posture that is seen in a flow or vinyasa yoga class that is called chaturanga or low plank. So this, um, just before I kind of break into it or get started with it, one common myth is that that posture is not the sequence of movements from your plank to your halfway lower to your up dog cobra or down and back to down dog. It is actually just one posture. So it is when you lower halfway, elbows bent to roughly around a 90-ish degree bend that you need in order to set up a successful halfway lower low plank. Um, strength is a big here element of the posture. However, mobility um, is also another element. So sometimes we get caught up on, I don't have the body strength to be able to do it when it may not necessarily all be body strength, or you may have the body strength but lack the awareness of kind of what's taking place in the posture. So we're going to break that down today. I have quite a few props. Um, if you don't have them, that's okay. Don't stress about it. You can do it without them. However, I personally feel like props um, can be a great addition, not only just to enhance your awareness, but to really make the brain-to-body connection and feel the movements a little bit differently than if you didn't have them. So first prop we're going to need to set up here is going to be a blanket. If you can grab your blanket or any blanket you have, um, that would be great. And fold it till it looks like so. And then you'll fold the blanket really tight to create a blanket roll. And then from, from that blanket roll here, you're going to place that the length of your mat. Once it's the length of your mat, you'll sit down onto it. Now, if you have a long torso, you may need a couple of blankets. Um, a couple other props that you, if you have them, great. If you don't, let them be nearby you. So it is a uh, dumbbell. I have both three and five pounds. Again, you don't have to have them. However, if you have something that's weighted, it could be two water bottles, it could be a can of soup in each hand, it could be a book on each hand, um, it'll be really beneficial as we move into this next movement. All right. So you'll sit down on your blanket roll, come to lie down onto it. So I'm going to aim for that blanket roll to be fully here, um, just underneath my spine, the full length of my spine. And then you can just take a moment to kind of adjust it. Okay, so first action we're going to take here is a movement of the shoulder blades. So your arms are going to go directly up towards the ceiling. Now one thing to notice here as we're taking this movement is we want to find first connection between your breath and your center and stability in your center. So when I say that I'm usually referencing or meaning here, the connection to your breath and your core activation. So actually before you lift your hands up, just take a moment that your hands rest out onto your abdomen and take a full breath and expand. As you exhale, actively draw your belly button downward. Draw your front ribs back. So thinking of almost kind of pulling your ribs back. And you may, as you start to activate your core, feel almost your low back move a little bit closer towards the blanket. Okay, with that in mind now, let your arms come up towards the ceiling. Take an inhale breath. So I'm going to pull my fingers towards my face like I was in an upside down plank pose. Take an inhale, breathe into your front side's back. And as you exhale, actively draw your belly button downward. So with this next movement, they're called scapular push-ups. What you don't want here as you start to move your arms, your shoulders down and then up, you don't want to bend your elbows. So arms are going to stay fully straight. My fingers are pulling back towards my face. Now next inhale breath that you take, as you focus on your center, your expansion, you're going to push your palms up. So as you push your palms up, your shoulder blades are going to move away from that blanket roll underneath you. Now, what you don't want here is to start to get really exaggerated where you create some tension on your neck. You just want to push to that point where you're like, yep, shoulder blades are lifted, they're moving away, but not to the point where you start to create here unwanted tension. Now, next exhale that you take, first find stability at your center, draw your belly button downward, activate your core, and then slowly here, like I was pushing or someone was pushing onto the palms of your hands, you're going to start to let your shoulder blades first go downward to surround that blanket roll, and then find a little squeeze at the bottom. So like you were trying to activate the muscles right at the middle of your upper back to surround that blanket roll. 
So my hands naturally here as I let my shoulder blades plug down, um, or my shoulders plug down here, my hands naturally come closer towards my face. Now your inhale breath, make sure you don't arch your low back, push your palms up once again. So we're moving through here with this scapular push-up as you exhale, tone your belly, and then move your shoulder blades towards one another and squeeze at the middle of your upper back. So you're moving through here, protraction of your shoulders. As you press your palms away, shoulders, blades are pulling here away from the center of your upper back. So that's that feeling of moving away from the blanket roll. And then as you exhale, you're retracting your shoulder blades. So you're bringing them back together. And if you could imagine here, as you draw downward, you're squeezing, surrounding that blanket roll with your muscles. And they're not super, super big muscles. So it might be a very subtle sensation. It's not going to be here like the sensation of your bicep. Just a few more times. And then we're going to add some weight. So more often than not, what I see is when we're trying to kind of really isolate the shoulder blade and find movement there, um, we tend to want a bigger movement. So the body starts to kind of like upper back starts to round, get tense. Think less is more here. One more. Okay, relax your arms, shake out your hands a little bit, roll your shoulders. Just take a moment, let your arms come alongside your body, lengthen the back of your neck, a few rounds of breath here. And with the exhale, instead of engaging your core, just soften. Try to feel a little bit more space here across the front of your chest from collarbone to collarbone. All right, second time moving through those shoulder blade push-ups. If you have the dumbbells, you can grab either the three or five pounds. Same thing though. So arms are gonna straighten towards the ceiling. I'm gonna turn the dumbbells here to face towards the ceiling. You can keep them here with fists with your hands or you can actually let your fingers kind of come away from them and then find your fingers kind of pulling towards your face once again. Now my arms are shoulder width distance apart. If you incorporate the weight and you feel like you can't control the movement, just ditch the weight. Take an inhale breath, push here, your hands towards the ceiling. Shoulder blades are pulling away from that center, your blanket roll. And as you exhale, draw your shoulder blades down without letting your elbows bend and then squeeze your shoulder blades to surround that blanket roll. We're going to take 10 of these, follow your own breath. Make sure as well with each exhale, you're toning your core. So stability at your center, that stability supports all the rest of your body and functioning as optimal as possible. And your breath really initiates here the speed that you're moving. So try to move just with your breath. Keep your arms shoulder width distance. Last five breaths here. Now there's no rush to get there. Bottom of the fifth time that you let your shoulders move down and then squeeze around that blanket roll, we're gonna hold. Hold and try to increase the amount of squeeze that you take to surround that blanket. As you're holding here, I'm gonna talk just briefly. So when you're in that protracted, when you're inhale breath, you're pushing here your hands towards the ceiling. That's the similar positioning of your shoulders in your plank pose. And then when you start to here, think about that chaturanga, that halfway lower, the low plank. As your elbows start to bend, they move from that protraction, the pull away from center, to then retraction, the squeeze towards center. Last four. Keep squeezing, surrounding that blanket roll for three, two, and one. Mindfully grip the weights if you have them, bend your elbows, release them. Kind of shake out your arms a little bit. And then take just a couple of moments to pause. Let the front heads of your shoulders turn away from the center of your chest. Let your shoulder blades just relax and surround that blanket roll. So getting a little bit more space across the front of the chest. And then palms will flip face up. A couple rounds of breath here. Try to fully soften on your exhale. And 
bottom of your next round of breath out. Once again, just let your arms reach up towards the ceiling. So we're going to take here that low plank, our chaturanga from face up. So taking our body weight out of the equation, we're really focusing in on first stability of your center. So your core engagement, using your breath to help kind of initiate that engagement, followed by here the movement from your plank to then your low plank. We're gonna use that blanket roll underneath us as well as feedback to feel the difference between your shoulder blades um, and the movement of your upper back and the muscles of your upper back between those two positionings. Postures. I don't even think that's a word. Positionings. Okay, hands are gonna face the ceiling. Draw your fingers back towards your face. And then just try to find here the space between. So you're not pushing your hands up, you're not squeezing them down. Try to find what feels like here, your center spot, your neutral place. On your inhale breath, we're going to imagine here, you can even close your eyes, but think about your plank pose. So start to push your hands towards the ceiling without bending at your elbows. Hands stay shoulder width distance apart. Now we're going to add one more layer here. These upper portions of your arms, think about spiraling them a little bit away from center. So you're not letting your shoulders come towards one another, but in kind of creating the opposite here, adding a little bit more here uh, distance between the two. Now pause. Push your hands towards the ceiling and try to feel your shoulder blades move away from the blanket roll here, the middle of your upper back. Now slowly as you exhale, draw your belly button down. Find the center here for activation at your center and then slowly bend your elbows. So my elbows are not bending wide, they're bending tight towards my sides. Now start to here, let the front heads of your shoulders move away from the center of your chest and squeeze around that blanket roll. So as you activate here your upper back, as you activate that squeeze of your shoulder blades, what you're doing is you're allowing the front of your chest to stay wide, stay open. And in turn, if you were to flip around here, you're avoiding here this rounding, this dump of your shoulders and additional unwanted strain and pressure on your shoulders. Okay, we're gonna take that five more times. Inhale, straighten your arms, think plank. Push your palms actively up, feel your shoulder blades move away from the blanket. Now, as you exhale against your own resistance, bend your elbows. So as I'm bending my elbows, I'm thinking about hugging my arms tight by my sides of my body. I'm drawing my shoulders away from my ears. And the deeper I bend my arms, I'm squeezing surrounding that blanket roll, feeling the front of my chest open and wide. Inhale, breath, straighten your arms, think plank. As you exhale, tone your belly. So think of fake coughing, draw your belly button down, bend your arms. Two more here. Get wide from collarbone to collarbone as you bend your arms. Elbows stay bent towards the sides of your ribs, but key here, I'm not letting my arms bend into my ribs. I'm letting my arms stay to the outsides. Okay, once more, breathe in, straighten your arms, and then just shake out your hands up overhead, and then release your arms. Roll to one side, remove that blanket, roll out from underneath you. And you can here draw your knees in towards your chest, just a feel good moment for your spine, rock sway, feel the difference without that blanket roll. And then just briefly let your legs come long here, let your right arm cross over the front of your body, use your left arm to pull your right arm in. And drop your right here, shoulder away from your right ear. And then release your right arm, switch left arms and across over the front of your body. Use your right arm to pull your left arm in. Try to encourage your left shoulder to drop down your back here, almost towards the ground and away from your left ear. And then release, once again, hug your knees in towards your chest. Rock and roll, make your way up to seated. Now as you make your way up to seated, you can ditch this blanket outside of your space. As we make our way up to seated, we are going to actually create some space here and just come to lie belly down. So as you come to lie belly down, you're just switching directions on your mat. And once you get there, we're going to come into baby cobra, but the emphasis of baby cobra is not going to be here the lift. It's not going to be the back bend. We're going to focus on here the upper body and shoulders. And more specifically here, not dumping the front of the shoulders down. So I'm going to exaggerate this really here. Try to see as if your shoulders are dumped, we're going to try to lift these front ends of the shoulders and then plug your shoulders down your back. So my arms are going to bend just below here and behind my shoulders. 
Elbows are not going to be wide. Hug your elbows in tight alongside your body. Now the back of my neck, try to lengthen it here by not lifting your gaze. So be mindful that you're not putting additional strain there. Now on your inhale breath, push down with through your palms. And then think of a little pull of your palms apart and back. So I'm getting wider, and then I'm plugging my shoulder blades down as I actively pull my hands back. So that's your inhale breath here. My elbows are hugging tight. I'm pulling as much as I possibly can back. Now your exhale breath, tone your belly button. Here, tone your core. Draw your belly button away from the ground like you're trying to pick a marble up with your belly button. Keep that tone. And then keep that pull wide and back with the heels of your hands. So that's going to be the extent of our cobra. Hold here and breathe. Each exhale, you're re-picking up that marble by activating your core, which is in turn protecting your lower back space. Last four. Hold here. Keep pulling the heels of your hands back. Think wide across the front of the chest and then pull back for four, three, two, and one. Take a moment to pause at the bottom. Now we're going to do that same thing, but now one breath, one movement. So your inhale, pull wide and back with your hands. Your exhale, tone your belly. Slowly keep the tone, lower your chin back down. Little release at the bottom. Once you start your inhale, pull wide with the heels of your hands. Lift the front heads of your shoulders and then drop back. Elbows, triceps, shoulders, all pulling back. Exhale, tone, release. Let's just take three more of those. If you need to straighten your arms in between, you are welcome to do so. Last one here. Now, hands are going to come wide here off of your mat. Just a brief counter here, a little bit different. Hands are going to be wide. The backs of my arms are facing towards the ceiling. On your inhale breath, push your fingertips into the ground, and then think of pulling your fingertips back. So I push, pull. Lift your sternum, lift your chest just a little bit away from your mat. Now, on your exhale, drop here your right shoulder towards the ground. Look towards your left shoulder, towards your left arm. Take an inhale, get wide across the front of your chest, push into your fingers, and then think of a little drag back. Lift the front ends of your shoulders. As you exhale, drop your left shoulder, look over your right arm, right shoulder. Come back to center just a few times, follow your own breath. Keep thinking each exhale like you're picking up that marble, toning your core. Try to maintain that engagement. Again, really try to create some space. And once you make your way back to center, drop your chin, drop your chin back down, and press yourself up into a tabletop hands and knees. Okay, second element we are going to set up here is with a strap. So if you have a strap, great. If you don't, that's okay. Again, props, I think, A, you can just get a little bit more muscular activation with them, and B, they're great feedback to make a little bit more brain-to-body connection. When you have that resistance, you're getting something in return kind of as, what do I feel, where do I feel it? Um, but you can live without them, too. So if you have a strap or you have something that's similar, you want to start to create a loop here. And this loop is going to be as big as or as wide as um, your shoulder width distance. Now, one other kind of fun fact I want to mention is that so often when we think of shoulder width distance, our hands um, tend to come closer together than what is really our shoulder width distance. So a trick here I learned that I really love is that if you find this outer superficial muscle of your upper arm, you want that to somewhat align with the center of your wrist crease. And that will determine your shoulder width distance versus just okay, I think my shoulder distance is like this. So you want to think here, you're aligning with the center of your wrist crease with this other portion of your arm. Okay, once you get the strap, or if you don't have it, that's okay. Your um, strap is going to come up towards your upper arms. So mine's a little bit too tight right now for my shoulders. I'm going to adjust it. Okay. 
Now once you find your distance here, oops, it's a little technical difficulty. Once you find your shoulder distance, um, place that on your upper arms, and then plant your hands down onto your mat. So we're going to come into what's called an extended tabletop. So this is tabletop. This is extended. Hands are going to walk up in front of you about a handprint distance. And then your chest is going to come forward till your shoulders once again are over your wrists. Tops of your feet here, push them downward. And then imagine your little spiral of your thighs wide so you get some outer hip tone. This um, low plank is really a full body posture. So my shoulders here are over my wrists. Now take an inhale breath. Think of the pull wide. We just did in Cobra. And as you exhale, draw your belly button in and up. So think of pulling your belly button away from your mat as you drag the heels of your hands and pull them back towards your knees. Knees will pull towards your hands. Again, challenge being you're staying wide across the front of your chest. Now another element of this posture, which can take kind of a lot of the force of it, is your wrist. So make sure that this doesn't hurt your wrist. If it hurts your wrist, I want to encourage you as well to think of pushing into more of your knuckles and like you are going to lift your heels of your hands energetically and actively here think of lifting. Just trying to get up and out of the wrist as being your support and thinking of using your muscles more. Hold here another four, three, two, and one slowly here. Just walk your hands back. Come to kneel for a moment. Now we're going to move this strap to your lower arm. So just your forearm position. Hands will once again come back out in front of you find your extended tabletop. Now we're going to add on to this. So you can stay with your knees down. If you feel really solid in your plank pose, lift your knees. What you don't want in a plank is this. You don't want to dump here your pelvis. I always kind of like to use the um, positioning of my pelvis in relation to my center of my chest. So if I'm in a plank and I feel like my pelvis, or I can actually see it dumping below the center of my chest, I know i got to lift up, find more of my core, belly button in and up, or lowering your knees. Okay, so as we build on this same idea, now pull your lower arm wide. On your exhale, tone your belly. And then actively drag the heels of your hands back towards your knees. Now you can stay on your knees or you can curl your toes under, lift your knees by plank. Keep thinking of wide on your inhale, and as you exhale, tone your belly, drag the heels of your hands towards your feet, feet towards the heels of your hands. Think wide across the front of your chest, collarbone to collarbone. Now push the ground away, add that other layer of uh, shoulder blades pulling away from the center of your upper back, so like that blanket roll was there. We're gonna hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and one. Mindfully, if you lift your knees, release your knees, hips to heels, dish the strap, roll your shoulders out, shake out your arms. On that note of um, the posture really being demanding, not just physically, but mobility-wise, make sure as you're doing the strengthening that you're countering. So when you feel good movement, get some of your movement at your upper back, your upper spine, middle spine, in your shoulders, draw some big circles. And then once again here, let your, this time, left arm cross over the front of your body first, right arm will pull your left arm in. And then encourage your left shoulder to kind of drop down your back here. Now, as you breathe in, sit just a little bit taller, draw your chin back, and as you breathe out here, drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. And then ever so gently here, draw your chin towards your chest. Slightly pull your chin back, lift your gaze, look up, release your arm. Switch, right arm will cross over the front of your body, your left arm will pull your right arm in. Encourage your right shoulder here back and down away from your right ear. Take an inhale, sit taller. And as you exhale, mindfully left ear towards your left shoulder. And 
And allow your chin to draw down towards your chest. Draw your chin back, lift your gaze. Release your arm. Okay, last and final here, prop. So if you have a bolstered braid, if you don't, that's okay. Grab a couple of blank, uh, pardon me, a couple of pillows, or you can even use a couch cushion, which is gonna be a little bit more um, uh, firm. We're looking for firm rather than um, fluffy pillow because you want a little bit of lift away from the ground. So if you need to prop up multiple um, pillows, feel free to do so to get that same effect. So we're taking our body uh, weight out of the equation here. We're gonna start in a plank pose or an extended tabletop. So my hands are gonna find my shoulder width distance. Again, tabletop is here, extended tabletop, hands are gonna walk out in front of you, a handprint distance, let your chest come forward. So if you are here, this is a great place to be. You're building the same exact muscular strength as you are in a plank pose. If you're here, make sure that you're really conscious you're not dumping your pelvis. So we're gonna pause, first start to find here um, what we did with the blanket roll line face up. So you're gonna push the ground away from you. Try to feel your shoulder blades pull away from the middle of your upper back. And you might even feel the sense of kind of broadening across the upper back space. Now, second line of business, get wide, pull your hands apart like you had that strap around them. On your exhale, tone your belly, drag the heels of your hands back. Now, lower body as well, a little spiral of the thighs wide. So you're active across here, your entire body. Try not to let your chest dump. We're gonna take an inhale breath in preparation. As you exhale, tone your belly. Keep that tone slowly with control lower to your bolster. And notice this first time that you lower if your pelvis dumped below the center of your chest. And now as you lower into your bolster, keep your toes curled under. In a traditional halfway low plank, your toes are curled under if you were up from a full plank. If your knees are lowered, it's gonna look kind of more like that. Knees lowered, toes curled under or they may not be curled under, they might be flat. Okay, so we're thinking of this in a sense of pausing halfway down from a plank pose. Now I'm gonna start here, my elbows are gonna stay tight, you don't want your elbows bowed up, elbows tight. Pull your hands apart, drag the heels of your hands back. What you don't want is your front shoulders here, the front ends of your shoulders to dump. As you see here, as I dump my shoulders, not only do my shoulders round forward, but I get more tension and then super tight your shoulders and towards my ears. So we wanna think the opposite. You wanna activate the middle of your upper back space. So now here is that squeeze of the middle of your upper back, like you were surrounding that blanket roll. Hands are pulling apart, dragging back. You're squeezing with your shoulder blades towards the middle of your upper back. Make sure you don't dump into your low back. Draw your belly button, lean it up. We're gonna pause here. So this pose is so active. We're gonna hold and breathe for eight seconds. Each exhale, you're finding that inner here center support by activating your core, and that center support extends outward to your entire body. Last three, two, and one, release, relax. Okay, press yourself back up away from that bolster. Last and final here, we're gonna to try to connect the dots and do that without any props underneath us, so adding our body weight into the equation. Um, if you feel like that was a decent amount of challenge, um, stick with this for a while. Continue to practice here with some sort of support underneath you. If you would like to build on it, add your body weight into it, find your extended tabletop or your plank. Press the ground away from you. Try to pull your shoulder blades away from the middle of your upper back. Lengthen your neck. Pull your hands apart. Drag the heels of your hands back. Push the ground away. Tone your belly on your exhale. Pause here. So this is great here. Foundational strength building for plank. If you would like to build, you can always lift your knees. Take an inhale breath. We're going to slightly here if your knees are lifted. Think of a little bit of forward motion. It's not gonna be a lot. As you exhale, elbows hug in tight, but you're not using your arms to your the line up. Slowly lower halfway, tone your belly, pull hands apart, drag them back. Lift the front ends of your shoulders, shoulder blades, squeeze, pause, breathe. And then all the way down. So we're gonna take that three times together here. Once you lift back up, start off, find your plank. 
trying to avoid here this dump of your shoulders, the round of your shoulders forward. And that'll also be important to know that the deeper that you bend your elbows, the more your shoulders naturally are gonna drop. So you wanna think that halfway down. Next, exhale, tone your belly, slowly, mindfully lower halfway. Pull the heels of your hands apart and back. Shoulder blades squeeze towards the middle of your upper back space. Bottom of your next exhale, lower all the way down. Last time. Next exhale, tone your belly, slowly lower. Imagine here, especially if your knees are lifted, that your chest was gonna lower before your pelvis. One spot of your exhale, lower all the way down. Take a moment here, press yourself back up, and just roll out your wrists so that work can be hard on the wrists. We'll counter it. Let the top of your hand press down into your mat here. This is essentially your, the angle of your hand in that positioning is fingers towards your face. So we're gonna flip the tops of the hands down and create space now. Opposite angle. And just a couple rounds of breath. Notice what you notice. Take a mental note of any areas of challenge with that posture. Such great information and things to work on. Thanks so much for practicing with me and breaking down our low plank chaturanga. Until we meet again, I hope you have a wonderful day. And all of what we worked on today can be something that you can practice and then go into a flow class. I'll offer in the comments section of this uh, a posture or a practice that I would recommend moving to after doing this. Take care.